You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Try to spice it. Who art is Mr. Wood <laughs> art ed me? Yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Now, for this week's Fun Fact Friday, I want to talk a bit about one of my absolute favorite artists, Vincent Van Gogh. He is in some ways the quintessential tortured artist. I think in popular culture, there is this romanticized image of Van Gogh suffering for his art, but feeling compelled to create, despite the fact that he was so ahead of his time that nobody would come to appreciate his brilliance until after his tragic death. It's said that he only sold one painting during his lifetime. I've heard it said so many times, I've never really questioned it. I myself have even repeated the claim, but is it true? Spoiler alert, no. While he was not a huge commercial success, Vincent van Gogh most certainly sold more than one painting during his lifetime, and his talent was appreciated by a number of other artists in his circle of friends who traded paintings with him, which is a sort of bartering or sale in addition to the works that were sold to collectors or the gallery. Okay, so one might say maybe the one painting thing is not literally true as far as the count, but it's part of a broader story of Vincent van Gogh as a solitary visionary artist. He held true to his principles and artistic vision. He was all about the art and didn't care about the trends or about what would sell. Isn't that right? Well, not exactly. While Van Gogh did not like the idea of art being commercialized, Vincent was actually a fairly successful art dealer before he trained as a painter. Art dealing was actually the family business. Not only was Vincent uh, an art dealer, his brother Theo was. Theo was Vincent's art dealer. And early on in his painting career, Vincent did write to Theo saying, hey, why aren't you selling more of these works? Uh, Specifically, the potato eaters, largely considered to be Vincent Van Gogh's first sort of masterpiece, it had trouble selling. It didn't really sell during his lifetime. And Vincent was upset, feeling like Theo should be doing more to get it sold. Theo responded by telling him that it was too dark and gloomy for people's tastes. And shortly after that, Vincent moved to Paris and adopted the brighter, bolder color palette that he came to be known for. As far as the idea of Vincent van Gogh as a solitary artist and a lone genius, uh, that's certainly not true. I mean, one of his more productive, although tumultuous times, was in Arles, France, where he was with Paul Gauguin and trying to start an artist's colony. He was certainly not a solitary artist. He worked in collaboration with others, and he was learning from others, trying to make his work brighter and more in line with the tastes and the fashions that was not only selling in the galleries, but also in the sort of avant-garde scene as people were moving into that post-Impressionist era. Vincent van Gogh sold his first painting to Julian Tengai, a Parisian art dealer. Now, at least that's the first one we have records of that I've been able to come across. Theo supported him emotionally and financially, as well as acting as Vincent's art dealer. Theo successfully sold at least one of Vincent's paintings to a gallery in London. We also know that he sold a painting, the Red Vineyard, to his friend's sister. Uh, So there we have... Like I said, at at least three, which I'm no math major, but three is greater than one. So he definitely sold more than one painting during his lifetime. And as I indicated before, additionally, he was known to have bartered trading paintings for food, supplies, and trading paintings with other artists, which is essentially a form of sale. So where does this myth come from? While the number is not correct in the specific, and generally the idea that Vincent van Gogh was dismissive of selling his works or didn't care about selling his works, that's not entirely true, but he definitely was not 
commercially successful during his lifetime. Um, There were a number of people who appreciated Vincent Van Gogh's work, but there were not a ton of people going out and buying it. There's kind of a funny story about one of his paintings that he gave away as a gift. Now, after an incident of self-harm, he was hospitalized, and he painted a portrait of one of his doctors, Dr. Felix Ray. Now, Dr. Ray had been a great supporter caring for Vincent for quite some time, And, of course, he naturally politely accepted the portrait as a gift from his patient, but he later confessed he never particularly cared for the piece. In fact, he thought so little of it, the painting was used to patch a hole in his chicken coop. In 1901, Charles Camoin, a friend of Henri Matisse, was in Arles following in Van Gogh's footsteps, and he found the painting in Dr. Ray's backyard. He then bought the portrait, which is now housed in the Pushkin Museum, and that painting is estimated to be worth $50 million. Needless to say, Vincent Van Gogh's work appreciated significantly in value after his death. And I think that's largely due to his relationship with Theo. Theo worked to build Vincent's legacy. During his lifetime, Theo was writing to Vincent, supporting him financially, talking to him about art, giving him advice on what could sell, and just being there to to listen or to read what Vincent had to say. And he was supporting him. Unfortunately, Theo passed away not too long after his brother, leaving his widow Joe to complete the task of building Vincent's legacy. While she no doubt felt family obligation, she also needed to earn a living, and she began selling Vincent's paintings and loaning others for exhibition in Paris and Brussels. She also started publishing Vincent and Theo's letters. Now, I think this was key. Because while Vincent van Gogh's paintings are absolutely beautiful, I I think we all know a little bit, at least some element of the story of his struggles as an artist. I did a two-part episode on Vincent van Gogh earlier this season, and I would refer you to that for more of his narrative. But it is the story that makes us fall in love with Vincent van Gogh. It makes us feel more fond of his work. Everybody loves a good underdog story. Everybody loves the idea that this struggling artist was brilliant and ahead of his time and created something that the world wasn't ready for, but now we see it and we get it and we appreciate his brilliance. While that story may not be entirely true about Vincent van Gogh, I think the sentiment taps into something deep, innate inside everybody. And I would encourage everybody to be mindful of that. Remember that while not everybody you meet is a tortured artist, there's that old expression that everybody you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind, be generous, give each other grace and find the good, find the brilliance in everyone you meet. Because maybe you'll meet the next Van Gogh, and that piece that seems discarded by the rest of society will net you millions of dollars when it's shipped off to the museum. Or maybe you'll just be a nice person who helped someone out when they needed it. And we'll all be better for that. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted? If you found this tolerable, please like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week in the show notes on Twitter at WoodArtEd and on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.